way to book of 2 Samuel chapter 21 this morning over towards the front of your Bible in the Old Testament towards the front. 2 Samuel is where we're going to be because of mama. Everybody say, because of mama. I got my tail beat. <laughs> hey. A lot of y'all got tails beat by daddy, didn't you? You know why? Because mama told him. <laughs> Ooh. Daddy might have been gone, but when he got home, mama told him everything. She told him everything. So that means you got two. Two whippings. And a lot of y'all probably should have got three every day instead of two every day. Not me. I was on number four and five. <laughs> Let's stand this morning and read God's word. It's just a little lengthy, but not much. So honor God in 2 Samuel chapter 21, verses 1 through about 10 is what we're going to read this morning. Because of mama. And listen this morning as we read. During the reign of David, there was a famine for three successful years. Six successive years. So, so, so David sought the face of the Lord. The Lord said, it is on account of Saul and his blood-stained house. It is because he put the Gibeonites, uh, Gibeonites to death. And the king summoned the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not a part of Israel, but were survivors of the Amorites. The Israelites had sworn to spare, had sworn to spare them. But Saul, in his zeal for Israel and Judah, had tried to annihilate them. David asked the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? How shall I make amends so that you will bless the Lord's inheritance? The Gibeonites answered him, We have no right to demand silver or gold from Saul or his family, nor do we have the right to put anyone in Israel to death. So what do you want for uh, me to do for you? Uh, David asked them. And David, uh, they answered the king, As for the man who destroyed us and plotted against us so that we have been uh, disseminated and, and have no place anywhere in Israel, let seven of his male descendants be given to us to be killed and exposed before the Lord at Geba of Saul, the Lord's chosen one. So the king said, I will give them to you. Then the king spared Bubba, son of Jonathan. <laughs> Y'all don't be laughing at me. You did the same thing. <laughs> because of the oath before the Lord between David and Jonathan, son of Saul. But the king took Ammonah, yeah, him too, Bubba one, Bubba two, and Bubba three. And the two sons of, 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 of his daughter, Rizpah, who she had borne to Saul together with the five sons of Saul's daughters, Mira whom she had borne to Adriel, son of Godzilla <laughs> and Bubba. He handed them over to the Gibeonites who killed and exposed them on a hill before the Lord. All seven of them fell together. They were put to death during the first days of the harvest just as the barley harvest was beginning. Now then on a very serious note, listen to this verse. Rizpah, daughter of Ai, took sackcloth spread it out for herself on a rock. From the beginning of the harvest till the rain poured down from the heavens on the bodies, she did not let the birds of the air touch them by day or the wild animals by night. You may be seated. God, this morning, as we see the dedication in the heart of Rizpah, for her children. God, let this speak to us today. Not just women, Father, but let it speak to us men as well. Let it to speak to everybody, man, woman, and child in our sanctuary. Things that a mama will do. In your name we pray, and amen and amen. 
This lady, you don't know much about her because we just kind of skip over Rizpah. She's not well known throughout the Bible like Mary and Mary Magdalene and, and all the other ladies. But she was good enough in the eyes of God that she made scripture. She made it into the Bible. And there's not much really said about her. But I want you to look, because of a mama, because of mama, what a mama will do. What a mama has done. What a mama will do in the future. You know, what is a mother? And the definition of a mother is a woman who gives birth to a child. Definition of a mother is a woman whose eggs unite with a sperm. Definition of a mother is a woman who adopts a child. Definition of a mother is a woman who raises a child. You see, a mother not only is somebody who gives birth, but also somebody who takes a child and raises it. A mother is not only just taking a child, but a mama is someone who teaches, who loves. That's what a mother is. That's what God is. That's what his son Jesus is. But because of mothers, and everybody in here today is equal. Everybody in here is either got a mother here in the flesh or you got a mother who is in the spirit today. But you had a mother. You did not come here well, let me back up. Some of y'all got here because of storks. <laughs> Some of y'all fell off another planet. <laughs> Some of y'all, I don't know where you come from. Every one of us has a mother. Every one of us was given birth. God chose your mother. He chose your mother to bring life to you. He didn't choose somebody else. He chose you. Now, with that being said, definition of a mother is someone who adopts, someone who loves, someone who raises a child. Now, some in here maybe has been risen. You've been raised from a grandmother. Maybe you were adopted. Maybe you was raised from the neighbor down the street. But you had mother in your life at some point, at some place in your life was a mother. Mothers is very important. God chose, as I made the statement a while ago, God chose a woman to tote the load. Not just from child, but I have to say it, and I think every preacher standing in a pulpit today would have to say it. Mothers tote the load in the church as well. Not bashing us men, by no means. It's just giving facts. It's just giving facts. Moms are built that way. Moms are built that way. The story starts out with King David instead of Rizpah, and, and it goes on to say about, you know, that Saul had did wrong. In other words, there was a group of people that, that their life was supposed to be spared, but Saul had them killed. And, 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 and there was a famine in the land. I mean, there was no rain. There was three years that there was no rain, none whatsoever. And everybody was concerned. I mean, no crops is growing. Nothing is happening. Water holes is drying up. Livestock and all this kind of stuff is dying. And, and David says, what's going on? I wonder why is this? And he went to God and he asked God, said, God, why is all of this going on? Why, are, why is there no rains? Why is nothing falling from the heavens? Why is this going on? Why? He says, because of Saul. He was supposed to leave these people alone and instead he killed them. I had, they, they had been a bondage made. They had been a promise made that said this group of people, they will, their lives will be spared. They will nothing happen to them. Nothing will happen to them. But Saul says, hey, I ain't got to go by that promise. I don't have to go by that decree. I don't have to go by none of that handshaking, none of that stuff. I don't have to go by that. And he killed some people. Now, what have we got to do now to make everything right? And this is where Rizpah comes into play because two of her sons, two of her sons was part of the seven that was given over for death. Not focusing on the death, but there were seven men that was handed over. Two of them was Rizpah's. And that's why verse 10 comes in. 
and it's so important. And it says, Rest the daughter of Ahi took sackcloth and spread. You see, the bodies had been stolen. And they went and they hung them up in the center square. They took them from where they were supposed to be and they went and they hook, uh, took them and hung them up for everybody to be displayed, for be on display for everybody to see. And so they went and they got these and they carried them. And they stood them out on the rocks, these two sons of Rizpah. And she went there and it said at the beginning of the harvest till the rain poured down. Now where does this come in effect of a lady that was dedicated is because the time of harvest, from the time of harvest to the rains came was a period of about five months. It was from May to about September. Now her two sons had been killed. Her two sons was carried and laid upon these rocks. And if you carry and lay a body out in the open, there's gonna be some bad, bad things that's going that, that that body will go through. And for five months, Rispa took sackcloth. She took her blanket and she went to the rocks where these two children of hers laid. Now, I don't know the oldest person in here, if your mother is still alive. I don't care if you're 50 year old. I don't care if you're 70 year old. You still mama's baby. You still mama's baby. I'd hate for her to reach over and grab you by the ear and drag you out of here. I'm going to laugh at you and you 60 year old and your mama's dragging you out by the ear. Miss Francis, go get Cobb and carry him out by the ear. <laughs> Only because he's got a hurt back the reason she don't do it today. But Rispa wanted to, she, she was not going to let anything happen to her children. She was not going to let anything happen. And here her children was laying out here on these rocks. And, and she says, I, 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 know, I don't care. For five months, she laid in the heat of the day on those rocks to keep the animals from coming and taking the bodies. When the birds would come to eat the flesh, she would shoo them off. In the cold of the night, laying out on these rocks. Here it was that she... When the animals and the coyotes and all this kind of stuff would come up and she would shoo them off, she made sure there was nothing going to happen to her children. It didn't matter that they had become young men. It didn't matter that they weren't little bitty babies anymore. Here it was that she was going to protect a mom is going to take care. Mom's going to take care of her children. Mom's going to make sure She's got her children. Here it is. If it wasn't, it had not been for moms, little dirty hands would not be clean. Small cuts and bruises would not be taken care of. Baseball, football, soccer ball, and all other uniforms would not be clean. Toys would not be picked up. Chicken nuggets wouldn't be cooked. Homework would be uncompleted. Mother's Day and Father's Day cards would not be bought. Chickens, goats, pigs, and dogs, cats, and whatever else wouldn't be fed. The bully on the school bus would have not been put in this place. Parent and teacher meetings would not have been attended. Children's books would not have been read would have went to bed without a bath. Some of y'all did that last night, didn't you? <laughs> we would still have dirty ears and dirty noses. <laughs> Clothes would still be turned inside out. Sarah's going to learn that Chet needs to turn his socks inside out. Bedtime stories would not have been read. So many things that a mom doesn't get credit for. If it hadn't have been for mom, if it hadn't have been for a mama, husbands would not be able to sit in the recliner with a remote control. If it hadn't have been for a mama, husbands wouldn't be able to go to the creek and go fishing. 
it hadn't have been for mama, the father would not have been and went and hung out at the golf course or in a baseball field somewhere or doing this or doing that if it hadn't have been for mama. Man would not have been able to play. But while we're doing all those things, men, mama is putting band-aids on the boo-boos. Mama is taking care of the little baby when it's sick. Thank goodness you had mamas because if it hadn't have been for your mama, you would still be wearing that nasty diaper the first one you ever had. <laughs> I know that I smelt some of y'all. But mamas, y'all got to explain something to me. This is the part that I just don't understand. The difference between men and women changing diapers. A man pulls it back and looks in there. A woman sticks her finger in there and then pulls it out. Man, we got one up on that one. Raise your hand, men. Come on. We got some teaching we got to do to these women. Woo! Because, Riz Paul, she wanted to make sure that her children had a, had a burial. She would go to any length. She would go to any length. She went to any length. She did whatever she had to do for five months, day and night. Five months, day and night. She stayed out there on them rocks. She stayed there. Your mom would stay to the very end. When you come home in the afternoon from school and you was crying because somebody bullied you around and you told mama, mama turned blood red just that quick and she was ready to go and I mean tear up or whatever she had to do. Somebody's going to get hit by a pocketbook. <laughs> because of mama, Rizpah was going to make sure that her children was protected. She would go to any length just like she did. You're not going to do my child this way. You're not going to, my child is not going to do this. There is no way. You know, a mama's love runs deep. A mother's love goes so, so deep. It goes so deep because there is a connection. She never quits. She never stops caring. A mother is always on the job, ready and willing to go to any length for her children, no matter what, no matter how. Mothers, you're special. You deserve a pat on the back, mama. You deserve a hand up. I know my mom, I, I know my mom, she, many days, many days, that I was hauled to a ball field because of her dedication. Many days that, that, that I spent, she would sit there in the hot, blazing sun. Moms, have you ever sat in the hot, blazing, blazing sun all day long just to watch your little rug rat run around and play ball? Y'all better raise y'all's hands, moms. I know y'all out there. Mom, did you ever go to the, and defend your child even though your child might have been in the wrong? You still went and you defended your child? Now, you corrected them, but you went and you defended them anyway. You still loved them. You see, a mom, it doesn't matter. You can end up in prison today. Your mom's gonna, still going to love you. You may do wrong in life, but mama's still going to love you. Not saying that she's not going to correct you. Not saying that she's going to get knocked upside your coconut head, but she's still going to love you. It don't matter where it happens to you in life. You can become the laughing stock of America today and your mom's still going to be there to defend you and love you. You can be that laughing stock. You can be, you can be anything. You can, whatever it may be in life. Whatever, whatever. You can be put in jail. You can be the laughing stock. You can, you can be hooked on cocaine or marijuana or alcohol or pornography, whatever. Mom's still going to be there to take your hand. Now she's going to correct you. Moms is going to be there. Moms never quit loving. Moms never stop. You may make a mistake, but mom is going to be there to correct. Moms, you deserve a pat on the back. If it wasn't for moms, and because moms, we 
were fed, we were clothed, and we were taken care of. Because of mothers, we learned to walk. Because of mothers, we learned to count. Because of my mother, I learned to say all these words correct. <laughs> See, y'all would have faked y'all's way through it, but I just went ahead and called him Bubba. You see, I know every one of y'all, mama taught me this. I know everybody's name, woman and man in the entire world. Do y'all? Mama taught me that. How you doing, brother? <laughs> How you doing, sister? <laughs> yeah. You never forget a name. How you doing, brother? How you doing, sister? Because of moms. Mom is there. She's there with the cries. She's there with the tears. She's there with the hurt. She's there with the pain. She's there to help you in any given moment, in any given time, and under any circumstance, mom is there. Mom is there. Ever got aggravated with your mom? Y'all better raise y'all's hand. I ain't gonna be the only fool standing up here by myself. Yeah, y'all did. But you know what? Mama still loved you. Mama was still there. Mama was still the help you. Moms. Moms. Even though, even though this happens, mom is still mom. There is no child today that has never, ever not had a mom in their life. We have so much to be thankful for. There's many moms who have been risen. There's some of you here today that doesn't have mom here physically. But just because your mom is not here physically, have you forgotten your mom? By no means. You see, this is where Rizpa, she did not have her children. They're in the flesh. But she was still there for them. She did not forget her children. A mom doesn't forget. A mom is there. Through the thick and through the thin. Moms. Kavi, if y'all want to start this way. Rizpah's daughter of Ahah took sackcloth and spread it out for herself on a rock. From the beginning of the harvest till the rain poured down from the heavens on the bodies, she did not let the birds of the air touch them by day or the wild animals by night. She protected. She protected. You see, I got a whole pile of moms. I got my mom here in the flesh today. And nobody can take the place of my mom. But you see, I got a lot of mothers, just like you got a lot of mothers. I got mothers in here. I got mothers in here who love me. I got mothers in who has adopted me. I got mothers in here who care for me, just like you. We can't take that spot of our physical mother. But that's why the definition of a mother is not just somebody who gives birth. But it's also somebody who adopts. It's also somebody who raises. It's somebody who loves. Rizpa give us today an example of the depth of love for a child. Even though that child had passed away, even though that child laid there on the rocks and the body decayed, she would not let one bird touch that body she would not let one animal touch that body. Moms will go the distance. Scorching heat, bitter cold. Mom, she loves you.